so in my talk today, we'll present to you iCard. It's a mobile health uh, technology platform that we have developed uh, in my lab at UIC for the remote collection of patient-generated health data and also the delivery of behavior change intervention using commercially available technologies. So I'll start, uh, I'll give you a brief introduction uh, around mHealth and also talk about the uh, main components and feature of the iCardia platform. And then I will also uh, show you two case studies as examples uh, to illustrate how iCardia can be used to promote self-care and healthy lifestyle behaviors across different uh, populations. I know Joseph uh, already uh, showed you uh, some of these stats, so I'm not gonna go in much detail. I just wanted to highlight here that, um, um, you know, 77% of Americans now own a smartphone, but what we also see is that lower income Americans and those over 50 have exhibited a sharp uptick compared to the previous survey. So we see also that a grown share of lower income and minority population adults are using smartphones as a primary mean for accessing the internet. And it's important to take note that unlike the uh, initial digital divide that placed computer use and internet access uh, beyond the reach of many older, disabled, and low uh, income adults, smartphones now have been widely adopted across different demographic and ethnic groups. So it is this um, uh, ubiquity that really presents enormous opportunities for um, expanding delivery of healthcare services to communities that are, um, are, are difficult to reach uh, and, and also uh, to improve outcomes. So another uh, important innovation uh, that has uh, definitely a profound influence in our society, and especially research in healthcare, is the use of uh, wearable sensor devices. So we've seen in recent years a host of um, smart connected health technologies that have emerged, uh, like uh, for example, Fitbit or uh, smart watches, smart clothes, uh, smart uh, Bluetooth enabled weight scales, blood pressure monitors. And most of these devices are capable of capturing large amounts of, of physiological and also behavioral data in real time. Uh, for example, heart rate, glucose, physical activity, sleep, and, and they connect to, smart, to mobile apps and transmit this data uh, for further analysis and feedback. Um, at the same time, another important thing to understand for, especially for those who don't have a technological background and might be wondering how, um, how do we capture this data um, uh, in this rich M health ecosystem, uh, many industry leaders such as Apple, Google, Fitbit, uh, they have engaged in substantial releases of application programming interfaces. So these APIs, uh, provide the means for one software program to access the services and data of another program. And this permits uh, software engineers and, and uh, third parties to develop new application and tools, such as the ones that we're, I'm going to show you today, which can access upon, of course, user authorization, large amounts of device-generated health data in real time from different devices and for different uh, purposes. So this ability to gather data about human physiology and behaviors in different contexts uh, and share this data in real time does create new possibilities for biomedical uh, and, and also for behavioral science research. Uh, for one thing, uh, this device is offer an ideal platform for empowering and motivation patients as previous speakers showed to you. Um, they, they can increase, they can help patients increase their self-monitoring of different health measures, become more aware of how their bodies work and what is normal and also be alerted to health changes that need medical attention while uh, staying motivated to make lifestyle changes. Uh, what's also important is that they can, this, these apps can support the exchange of health information with care, uh, healthcare providers, uh, enable delivery of clinical behavior change intervention in a timely manner to improve health outcomes. Uh, so tracking and analysis of, of all these data that are gathered in a longitudinal manner uh, can also reveal new uh, patterns or biomarkers that are uh, informative of disease severity or, or progression. Um, uh, as you'll see now um, in, in, in the two case studies, by capturing uh, big data in real time uh, and by being able to assess multiple behaviors in different contexts, uh, we can build what we call the digital phenotype of each patient. We can create more personalized 
uh, medical treatments, and also design uh, uh, just-in-time adaptive interventions. So motivated by all these groundbreaking uh, developments in the area of mHealth, uh, a couple of years ago, my collaborators and I embarked on this new project to develop this um, iCardia platform, uh, initially focused on cardiovascular disease. Uh, we wanted to develop a uh, scalable mobile health platform that interfaces with uh, commercially available devices and allows us to remotely collect multiple uh, different types of health data generated from these devices and deliver behavior intervention using low-cost text messages at the beginning and uh, eventually other smartphone enabled features. So if I can uh, walk you through this uh, slide, uh, we, we use devices such as Fitbit, Nokia Health, blood pressure monitor and weight scale, the iHealth uh, glucose monitor, and all these devices uh, interface with their native app and once they sync data to their app, all the data goes up to the uh, cloud. And from there, uh, we have um, uh, partnered with these companies and have uh, um, gained approval to receive the data of, of uh, our patient population upon, of course, user authorization and consent. And uh, basically, iCardia uses visual graphs uh, and predictive analytic tools to uh, present this information to our care manager, our, uh, care managers, our clinicians, uh, and from there uh, assist in the development of, of um, text messages that are tailored to the needs of each uh, participant. This is uh, the interface of the dashboard of iCardia. Uh, here you can see uh, this is just a chart that shows uh, uh, Fitbit data. They're coming intraday data so we can monitor heart rate continuous physical activity throughout the day, number of steps. Uh, we can also uh, view sanitary behavior uh, across different hours and, and identify patterns and behaviors that could help us build um, uh, more dynamic interventions or better text messages to engage participants uh, in, in physical activity. This is another screen that shows the physical activity of one uh, subject over time. Uh, including sanitary behavior um, in the second graph. And this is the interface for um, uh, the text messaging feature. So we can uh, create a new database for each study with new text messages and we can schedule messages to be sent right away or at a later time. Uh, we can even administer different questionnaires through this um, uh, tool that we have. So iCardia right now, um, uh, besides the two pilot studies that we ran last year, um, the iCardia is currently used in uh, uh, several NIH funded studies shown in this table. As you'll see, each study focuses on a different condition. Um, for example, asthma, heart failure, and hypertension. So in the next few slides, I'll present to you two examples of how we use iCardia. First is uh, in the area of heart failure. I'm not going to go into details about the condition. Uh, our time is running. So um, basically, uh, working with patients and clinicians, we developed uh, a patient-centered intervention that is named iCardi for heart failure. Uh, the main goal is to promote heart failure self-care um, through a multi-connected app kit that you see on the right-hand side. Uh, basically, it, it, uh, it uses commercially available devices called Heart Failure Health Storylines that interfaces with uh, three um, uh, commercially available devices, Fitbit, the Nokia Health Blood Pressure Monitor, and the Weight Scale. Uh, and uh, we, uh, it, the intervention, as you'll see, also incorporates text messages. So the main goal is to promote uh, better self-care behaviors, um, uh, improve adherence of self-care behaviors in this population. And this is uh, an RCT that is funded through the Midwest Royable Center. Uh, the follow-up is eight weeks. It focuses on uh, patients who are 50 years of age or older and have been hospitalized uh, due to heart failure. And uh, the control group is uh, basically usual care. In this table right here, you see um, all the measures that basically we're capturing. Uh, we're capturing weight properties, blood pressure, uh, the app is capturing symptoms. Uh, it also has a medication tracker, and then Fitbit allows us to capture continuous heart rate, physical activity, exercise, sanitary time, and sleep. Basically, um, uh, all these devices offer 
uh, active or passive monitoring. When I say active, that means it requires a patient to do some action, uh, like step up on the uh, step on the scale, or um, it's passive monitoring when Fitbit captures all the data continuously without the participant doing anything besides just wearing the Fitbit. Now, with respect to the text messaging uh, component, um, the text messages aim to improve um, adherence to self-care behaviors and they focus specifically on health beliefs, self-care efficacy, and heart failure, failure knowledge. And they're guided, the me messages are guided by patients' responses to validated um, scales administered at baseline in 30 days. Uh, so for example, the items on the health belief scales are divided into benefit um, uh, and vary questions about medication adherence. So each item on the scale receives a five point score ranging from one to five and participants who score four or above or on a barrier or a benefit uh, or below three on a benefit question, they receive a text message. These are some examples of the text messages uh, we're sending them. And we're focusing, this is our, uh, these are our primary outcomes and secondary outcomes. So mainly focus, this is a pilot RCT, so it's not powered um, to, um, read statistical significance, but we're very much interested in seeing how um, routine self-care behaviors uh, change, both those that are objectively assessed with the devices and of course those that are self-reported based on the um, SCIFI um, scale that we're using. Other outcomes are health-related quality of life, hospital admissions, and so on. The second case study is an R01. Um, now, both of these studies are newly funded, so we don't, we just started, we don't really have any results to show. Hopefully in the near future, in another presentation, I'll be able to um, illustrate some uh, results, preliminary results. Um, the second study is a collaboration with Rush, and the main goal of this study is to determine which is the most effective adoptive intervention, combining four efficacious treatments. Uh, Fitbit activity monitor, motivational text messages, motivational personal calls, and group meetings. Uh, here, iCarta is, is used as a central system for the data collection uh, from Fitbit monitors and also the delivery of text messages. Uh, we are using uh, a sequential multiple assignment randomized trial design known as SMART design. Uh, for those who are now familiar uh, with SMART trials, uh, they allow researchers to basically assign participants to different treatment conditions depending on uh, response or non-response to the treatment. And this way you can um, uh, test several potential adaptive interventions. So if you see on the right hand side here, we start off with uh, two groups, the one receiving a physical activity uh, monitor, um, that's the Fitbit monitor, and, uh, and the other group uh, receives Fitbit plus text messaging. So after eight weeks of Follow up uh, based on uh, the data that we collect uh, with iCardia. We distinguish between those who are, uh, who are responders and those who are non responders. And the non responders are randomized to another um, uh, intervention that uh, involves augmented telephone calls or um, group meetings. This, is, uh, uh, this study uh, aims to recruit 312 participants. Um, the follow-up period is 12 months, and the main outcome of interest is uh, STEPS and MVPA. So basically, um, all these advances in mHealth technologies are uh, enabling development, the development and delivery of scalable and affordable mHealth interventions beyond a traditional office visit and, uh, and across populations. Uh, the use of iCardia has the potential to aid in modifying self-care behaviors as we have seen in the small pilot studies uh, and re in relation to physical activity, exercise, diet, weight management, and other lifestyle choices uh, which have an impact on chronic diseases. Uh, using iCardia and the real-time data, we can um, offer personalized coaching and goal monitoring. And we're currently working on um, capturing some of the events that may happen um, and, and basically support, you know, active surveillance of patients who are at high risk, especially with heart failure. Um, and of course, the use of this data can help um, create this individualized, tailored health interventions. However, there, there are a lot of different challenges that uh, one needs to consider. Uh, when we're talking about uh, mHealth technology, the, the technology itself changes rapidly 
And sometimes these changes are beyond the control of the research team. For example, Fitbit recently uh, launched a new activity tracker. So there's always that question of validity of the new trackers, whether the algorithms change and so on. At the same time, um, uh, randomized trials have been considered the gold standard, uh, but with prolonged duration from recruitment to publication and of course high cost uh, trial implementation and, and the rigid trial protocols and how many years, of course, they take to um, get published. Sometimes they're considered an impractical method to assess these highly innovative mHealth tools. And I know Dr. Cafazo had authored uh, an excellent paper on this uh, topic, uh, very, very relevant problem to our trials right now. Uh, and finally, as with uh, any measure before mHealth tools can be recommended, of course, we have to test their reliability and uh, validity, uh, which, is, which presents a challenge because, um, as I said before, technologies are changing and that may affect the quality of the data. And sometimes in some areas we have lack of gold standard assessment methods um, to compare those mHealth tools. These are my collaborators at UIC uh, and other universities uh, that we are um, working with in the trials I, I mentioned to you before, uh, in which uh, iCard has been used. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, this are my contact information in case you wanna uh, reach out to me. Thank you.